Daniel, a nice win with the black pieces in the Karakan. Now we hear from the very start that one shouldn't move their piece twice in the opening. But clearly your game was breaking all such rules. Okay, I mean, this is general rule, of course, which often uh, doesn't work. I mean, it's um, for concrete purposes and just chased his queen and... Uh, I'm fighting for the black square, so I wanted to exchange the black square bishop. He also played bishop f4 and bishop h6. I mean, knight g8 looks, I mean, uh, bishop f8, bishop d6, this more or less standard in many games, also in Queen's Gambit, but okay, knight g8 looks a little bit ugly. But um, I'd want to move my knight to f5, actually, and then later g5 was an option. It wasn't necessary, I think, because if I just castle, maybe it's equal position. But I thought that g5 was really interesting, trying to create some play. Yeah. Right, so you mean this idea of knight f6, you develop first, then you went back to g8 because you want to reroute it to f5. And then you played g5 and bring it to f4. Yes, okay, this this wasn't my plan from the beginning because I didn't expect him to play this variation first and then this bishop f4, bishop h6. I'm not sure that ever happened, but I mean, it's it's normal. I'm, I'm trying to exchange the queens, after which he have absolutely nothing. Okay, he put his queen on h2, which is kind of ugly. And um, but okay, he have his ideas. Uh, he waiting to enter to c7, for example, or to d6. So I have to be careful. But what I don't like is his move before. Um, I mean, uh, it's okay maybe for him. It's really became really complicated. But I thought it's unnecessary because my idea g5 and h5 and g4. It's a little bit too slowly. He always can play knight e5, and I don't really think that I can mate him or create some real attack. Uh, and the plan was that actually to play queen f4 at some moment and exchange this queen from h2 and then I have equal position, I guess. Yeah. Right now, uh, we don't see the Karakan so much at the very, very top elite events. Why do you think it uh, doesn't have the best of the repetitions? Okay, I have a uh, very bad experience myself, actually. Um, I'm always losing against strong guy Karakan. For example, the first time I played Dortmund Super Tournament, I lost twice against first, second place, against uh, Karakan and Karuana, both in Karakan in the same variation. By the Olympiad, I decided to play Karakan against Volokitin, and I lost as well. Uh, maybe this is the reason why they're not playing this on the high level. But uh, Rezantsev, for instance, okay, he's not playing all these elite super tournaments, but he won uh, Russian Super Final, which is by far not the weak tournament, and he played Karakan all the time, so I wouldn't say... It's a uh, it's, um, matter of mode, uh, I mean, this is fashion. Some moments everyone starts to play Karakan, some moments some everyone starts to play Petrov or Berlin or whatever. It's actually quite interesting because uh, though you say you lost with the Karakan, it seems like all of you know that it's maybe not the best line, but you can't stop yourself from playing it because we see Fabiano has been playing it as well in this tournament. Um, Okay, and those times in Dortmund, it was against Karakin, I was just naive because I analyzed something like one hour and I stopped at the moment where his analyze just started. And uh, yeah, okay, I mean, it was possible to save the game, but you need to play like 10 or 15 only moves, computer moves, no chance. Against uh, Fabian, I got actually quite good position, like out of every opening and he overplayed me and I mean it can happen if nothing to do with the opening and Olympia at my loss against Volokitsyn yeah um, he played some strong novelty and I reacted to principle and uh, was crushed out of the opening more or less but there's this principle line with third move e5 yeah and what uh, Zvagantsev played Zvagantsev is a very original player and it's really difficult to uh, prepare against him because he played like all kind of moves, we know that his e4, c5, knight a3, for example. And against Karakan, he played all kind of stuff. He played d4, f3, he played e5, he took on d5, he played knight c3, he played knight c3 and queen e2, third move, like, like every possible random, almost random. So I checked something, except this variation, of course, like always, uh, but I saw this variation... Happens to every chess player. <laughs> yes, yes, but uh, the reason is that I think that's this variation is really not dangerous for black. I mean, you don't need really to prepare some long lines. Uh, it's a positional game, you get this um, 
the st typical structure out of the qu uh, Queen's Gambit. And okay, you play, you're shuffling pieces around. I mean, there are no big uh, risks that you get mated in 15 moves or something. Uh, this was the reason I didn't prepare this variation. I just I played a lot of games in this variation already. I mean, you have some experience. Right, and in fact, this idea of g5, knight, g6, putting a knight on f4 was quite an inspired play from your side and trapping his queen on h2. It almost felt like a one-sided game. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, uh, I, I thought that after b4, I was quite happy with my position because after rook c8, I have all this... I mean, I don't want to play uh, castle long anyway. So rook c8, just logical. And then I have this tempo when I play knight c7, so c3 is hanging. I was quite happy, but it was quite tricky. For instance, I think instead of knight a5 to the end of the game when I played b6, we exchanged on c6, he took with the pawn, and then I started my attack because all my pieces staying good. I think it works. Maybe computer will say otherwise. Uh, instead of knight a5, I was calculating c4 immediately. And the position, um, I believe that I should be better, but that's such a mess, you know, like everything can, is possible and you miss one move and uh, it's already uh, over or it's uh, white is better. So I wouldn't say that um, it was one-sided. Maybe it looks like by... Okay, we should check with computer, of course. Maybe it was, but uh, I doesn't feel... No, not, not during the game. I was creeping with my position, but not that I'm overplaying him, like... Uh. Right, of course, and now you're here with Anna, who's also playing in the tournament, as well as your baby. Yeah. How are you managing? <laughs> Yeah, the first uh, few days wasn't that easy uh, because we contacted some person from the kindergarten here to babysit our son. And um, at the arrival day, they, they said we cannot. I mean, the person said uh, we cannot. This was a uh, little bit critical uh, at the moment, but uh, thankfully to wife of uh, Kaidanov, um, she looked for uh, for Yosha the first day, and the second day Anna took a buy, and then we got uh, a hint that we should ask uh, the lady from the gift shop and. Uh, local connection and uh, they found uh, the babysitter for us so she's babysitting now <laughs> and i will release her soon right so is it like a little bit of a family holiday also okay it's not really a holiday of course uh, you should play you should prepare which is not so easy when uh, the two years old is jumping all over you and um, but uh, i think it's interesting for him and um, for us it's a little bit difficult, but we don't have much choice in, in this situation because uh, we, he's too young to stay at home with my parents, for example. And so uh, it was the only chance for us to, to, to take him with us. And then right now, of course, it's, it is a big challenge to have a two-year-old with you, but does it also help in kind of keeping it a little easy, the atmosphere a little easy because you come back after the game and then you've got this really cute baby around? No, of course. I mean, uh, I'm happy that at least one of our child is here. And uh, first of all, we don't need to worry what ha what's going on at home. And of course, he is a uh, funny young guy. Okay, not always, of course, but um, often, I think, yeah, joyful kid. And yeah, I think it's, uh, it's quite good. Uh, I, I wouldn't repeat it a lot. Uh, it's... Uh, we did it already by US Championship. The last US Championship Anna played, we even traveled with both kids, uh, but I was only babysitting. It was also a little bit difficult, but uh, it worked. But we don't have too many tournaments when we're both playing. And it's actually only Gibraltar and uh, Olympia one in two years, and once in two years, yes. Right, well, despite juggling it all, you seem to be doing pretty good. Five and a half out of seven, a great win with the black pieces against Ragnarsev. Never easy to do that. Congratulations, and we wish you all the best for the remaining rounds. Okay, thank you very much.